Hello, my name is Brittany Classens and I am one of your design programming tutors this semester. Today in this first tutorial we'll be going over some introductory basics to p5.js as well as completing a few challenges. Uh, just a note before we start, there may be times where this video is a little bit glitchy, uh, it doesn't interfere with any of, any of the content being taught and it will be fixed for next week. Cool, okay, let's get started. In today's tutorial, we'll be covering three challenges. They include my first sketch, using the draw loop, and using relative values. Before we start the first challenge, let's go over a few basics. When coding in p5.js, you will notice two main blocks, set up and draw. These are called functions. There are also plenty other functions we can use, but we'll learn those a little later down the track. The setup functions contain any code involved in initializing your program. This could include tasks like setting the size of the canvas or defining values for the variables you want to use. It will only run one time, so it's the perfect spot to put things you only want to happen once in. The draw function, on the other hand, contains almost everything else. In fact, it is where you'll write most of your code. The draw function is repeatedly run, and by default, it is run 60 times per second. This is great for making interactions and animations. For this first challenge, we'll be primarily using ellipses and lines. So let's take a look at those. Ellipses, also known as circles, accept between four and five parameters. Parameters are variables that are scoped to the function that can be assigned a value when calling the function. So, for ellipses, the parameters we'll be focusing on today are the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, the width of the ellipse, and the height of the ellipse. Similar to ellipses, lines can, be, can accept between four and six parameters, with the ones being focused on today, the x and y-coordinates of the first point, and the x and y-coordinates of the second point. So, with all that in mind, it's time to begin the first challenge. Let's start with step one. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my canvas size so it's a little bit bigger. This is a personal preference and not really a necessary step. Then I'm going to start drawing my ellipse or circle, making sure to remember the first two parameters are the x and y position of the ellipse and the last two are the width and height. Just going to check that by pressing run. Yep, it looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to start drawing my lines. Remember the first two parameters for lines are the location of the starting point of the line and the last two are the ending point. Again, just gonna check that by pressing run. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So for the next ones, I'm going to make sure that I evenly increment them. So I'm going to only touch the X parameters, meaning the first and the third parameter, and probably increment them by 30, that seems okay. Um, it's a bit of a see how you go. So if you might want them closer or further apart, that's up to you to decide and just have a fiddle with it. But for this case, I think 30 should be plenty. Just gonna check that. Yep, that looks spot on to me. So now I'm just gonna quickly do the other three lines, just incrementing the X positions by 30 again.
and pressing run finally to have a final check. Yeah, that looks pretty close to the picture. Great. Let's move on to step two. Now that you're familiar with drawing ellipses and lines, it's time for you to have a turn at coming up with your own creation. Have a think about things or objects you could draw simply using ellipses and lines. If you want to further explore, make sure you check out the p5.js reference website. Here are some examples I made earlier. Pause the video here to complete the task. Make sure you ask your tutor if you have any questions. When creating a new sketch with P5, we can view it in a web browser. In the browser, p5.js creates a canvas which serves as an area for you to draw your graphics. Depending on your input, the canvas can be the size of the window or can have specified dimensions to suit your design. Remember, when drawing on the canvas, the x-coordinate is the distance from the left edge of the canvas and the y-coordinate is the distance from the top edge. A good technique to remember is to use the window width and window height values, which helps the canvas match the size of your browser window. Make sure you remember to use camel case, meaning every word following the first word starts with a capital letter. For many, being able to style the shapes they draw is the best bit. All basic shapes in P5 allow us to have control over their fill colour, outline colour and outline thickness. However, an important thing to remember when styling multiple objects on the screen is the order in which we style. This is because all styling functions are applied to all shapes drawn after them, which means we need to give styling commands before drawing the shape. To put it simply, the order of operations in P5 is exactly how we read, top to bottom. So, if we apply a style at the top of the draw loop, it will apply to every shape drawn after that. If we want to style other shapes differently, we need to use a styling function again to overwrite the previous one. So with all that in mind, it's time to move on to the next challenge. Let's start with step one. The first thing we're going to do is change the canvas dimensions from static values to window width and window height. Don't forget to use the camel case. Then, by also changing the X and Y parameters of the ellipse from static to mouse X and mouse Y, just take a look to see what happens. See how because we have put our code in the draw function, the ellipse is constantly being withdrawn, redrawn when the mouse is moved, so it makes the trailing effect. This can be used in many more advanced designs down the track. So now that we get the basic idea of how to change from static values to dynamic values, let's explore how we could style this challenge in part two. So just like the first one, I'm going to go through and change the canvas size to window width and window height, even though the default background color is going to be white, I'm just gonna add it in anyway. I'm also gonna make an ellipse and make that ellipse the same as last time with mouse X and mouse Y as its values. I'm also kind of feeling about perhaps changing the color, maybe to a purple color. And also I think it would be interesting if I fiddle with the opacity. So maybe if I lighten the opacity, let's see what happens with that trailing effect. So just copying the same for the stroke. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I think I wanna to change to a square. So I'm just gonna adjust the values of the ellipse. Have a look and see how that looks. Perfect. 
but I'm sort of over the purple now. So maybe like a pinky red. Also, be sure if you're having troubles with the colors, be sure to look at the P5 reference list and be familiar with RGB color codes. Yeah, that looks much different to the first time. Great, awesome. Okay, so now that you have seen me have a go at transforming this challenge, it is your turn. Pause here to complete the task. Remember, your tutor is around to help you and answer any questions you may have. Before we move on to the next challenge, it's important that we go over variables. Variables can be seen as boxes with unique names that allow us to store data in our programs. This data could be a number, a word, or something a little bit more complex. It might correspond to the coordinate of a shape we want to draw, a color we have extracted from an image, or an object with properties and behaviors. Most variables that we work with will be ones that we've defined ourselves. We will be giving them a name and a value, and they'll be there to access and modify later. There are also some variables provided by p5.js automatically such as the X and Y position of the mouse cursor, mouse X and mouse Y, which we covered in the previous challenge. So why do we want to use variables? Honestly, it's a massive time saver. When we are coding complex designs that require copious lines of code, storing data and variables not only makes things easy to read, but it simplifies our coding process. Let's have a look at some examples. So first, let's have a look at the output of the sketch initially. Cool, okay, so we have three circles equally distant. Having a look at this code, we can simplify it greatly. First, I'm going to add two variables, circle W and circle H. And I'm going to give them the values of 150 and 50, respectively, just like below. Then I am going to change the values of the circles to include circle W and circle H. And if I press run again, you can see how it is exactly the same. So before we move on, there is just another thing I want to show you. So with this code, do you see how it doesn't work? right? The canvas is empty. As you can see, they declare X position variable in the setup function, but they draw the circle in the draw function. This means that that position, that variable is only going to work in the setup function. So there are two ways to fix it. Firstly, we can move it into the draw function. So it only works when the draw function is being ran. Or we can move it outside both the, the setup and the draw function and make it a global variable. So it, it gets run whenever. See, it then works. Now that we have been through two challenges, it is now your turn to have a go at completing one. In groups of two or three, we walk through the steps of the using relative value challenge. Use one laptop per group and make sure you are discussing potential answers equally. After each step, swap whoever is in charge of the laptop, and if you are really stuck, ask your tutor for assistance. Pause here to complete the task. 